Hi guys, so I'm here today with all of my wonderful colleagues. This is Rebecca, Emmy, and Isabel. You probably all know them already, but for, <laughs> you know, my new Dutch followers, these are the wonderful ladies I get to work with on a daily basis. Um, yeah, and uh, we asked you guys for some questions that you might have for me or for them. And well, I think my colleagues have read through all of them. Yes, we have them here on our phones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you ready to get roasted, Eva? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Rebecca, do you want to start? Um, so uh, I had some. Oh, I'm dropping my mic. Wait. So I was thinking about your last name because public service did a very strange report on your yeah about your teaser and your trailer here launching at Rex and they pronounce your last name very interesting yes. maybe we can clip in should we clip yeah, in how that it. sounded look at this programledare är till en början Eva Färingsbroik fram tills förra året var hon Eva Färingsbroik So fla oh, Färing that was bad Flaring. that was terrible So my oh. first question isn't actually to you Eva it's more like let's do a competition who pronounces Eva's last name the best Okay and we do and you will decide who does it Vladingerbrook Eva Vladingerbrook Oh, that sounded more... Yeah, that was Dutchy. Dutchy. Yeah, that was really close, so, yeah. yeah. Now I don't even know how. Now I'm just thinking about okay, the... Okay, go! Flaringerbroek! Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, Vla Vla Vladingerbroek. <laughs> Actually, you guys did all at least 10 times better than Swedish yeah. State TV. Yeah. But I have to say, though, I have to give it to them. I've never heard my name butchered like that before. Right. I mean, flag, ring, and bro. Where's the L? Where's There's the L go? Yeah. Where did the D? You know, I mean. Yeah. Can you pronounce your name? Okay, so in, we even for the Dutch, it's not the easiest name. So I have to give you that. But you all were very close. It's Flaardinger Broek. Flaardinger Broek. So it's Eva. <laughs> good lesson, guys. Eva Flardinger Brook. Amazing. Maybe that's where go. where they get like it sounds like an F. But yeah, and but it spells our, like with a V, so it's our like V is stronger than yours. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But I mean, Eva does the trick. Yeah, right, right. Eva, right. we're going sure. to call you Eva. All right. So from next now on. question then is, how old are you? I'm 24. Awesome. 24. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, what's your background? Oh, uh, you mean academic background? Yeah. So I studied law and I did my master's in philosophy of law. So I'm a legal philosopher. Um, and I actually started working on a PhD a little bit over a year ago, yeah. which I didn't end up finishing. But I mean, yeah, legal philosophy is my is my background. It's a lot about it's very political. It's uh, it's obviously about the law, about all questions concerning democracy, you know, yeah. state forums, things like that. But yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed, I didn't enjoy my law studies, but I did enjoy philosophy of law. Okay. How many years is that in Holland? Bachelor of three years, master's yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then PhD, three okay. or four. So yeah. I think that your questions are pretty boring. Like, how old are you? I'm, well, going, we have to, you I'm going to ask the real questions up in here. So Eva, are you single? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yes, next question. No, <laughs> next question, good. All right, that's me. Uh, did you move to Sweden full time? I did. Wonderful. Oh. I have emigrated to oh. Sweden. Uh, uh, I don't like that. Uh, I'm kidding. Not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to be back home in Holland for, you know, every yeah. now and again. Yeah. It's not yeah. far. It's not yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah, it's only like, like an like hour a, with like Swedish. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you, <laughs> talk, talk, you look talk, more talk Swedish than we do. Yeah. <laughs> you have start to learn some Swedish. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Good. Learn the Swedish. Oh, here we oh. go. Svenska. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I ruined it I love already. That. Oh, That's so funny. My Swedish teacher is gonna kill me. <laughs> uh, have you learned any bad words yet? Oh, I hear you say. Oh, we're not gonna no, say no, that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, no, I'm good there. question, Rebecca. We're keeping this. Mm. Uh, it's a bad yeah. Yeah. Question. question. Will you be making content in Dutch too? I think so. I mean, most of my content will be definitely in English, but if there is something happening in Dutch politics that really needs some commenting in Dutch, then I can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's my turn, right? Um, 
So why does, and I think this is a question that we got actually. So why does the feminists and LGBTQ, QIA plus. I don't love. I don't <laughs> love those uh -huh. letters. The LGBT whatever go hand in hand <laughs> with radical Islam. Oh well, that's actually a good question. Um, why does the LGBTQI plus AI plus AI really? plus <laughs> movement and the feminist movement go hand in hand with radical Islamism? I mm -hmm. think because. In fact, they are, they have the same sort of neo-Marxist ideology that backs them up in the sense that, you know, well, not the radical Islamists, obviously, mm. but the, why do the feminists embrace them is mm. because they see themselves as victims. Mm, so right. feminists, you know, intersectional feminists, they think more in terms of who's the oppressed person in society and mm. who's the oppressor. Mm. And then always blaming blaming the other. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so yeah. then the feminist women and minorities so also you know people with an islamic background a migrant background are usually a minority in the west therefore they're oppressed like women like any other minority yeah done deal well they that's usually it. say that the enemy of my enemy is my friend i think that's kind of the unholy alliance between islam and feminism because they both have one enemy, and that's the patriarchy of the West. Yeah. I'm so sick and tired of everyone always playing the victim and always pointing fingers. Like, fix your problems yourself. How dare you, Man up! Is that a bad word to say, man up? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. that's, very, that's, that's very sexy. Yeah, yes. I shouldn't do that, sorry. Okay, so, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay, should we leave the EU? Uh, we, do they mean Sweden? or do they Sweden mean... and Holland? Well, I'll answer right. for Holland. Uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Which, which camera? Yeah. No, yes. you just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Yes, okay. That's a good... That's no yeah. more elaboration? Well, I, I don't think we need to. I mean, I, I, well, I can say I at least I, I worked in the European Parliament for a while. Oh, you did. So I've seen it from really up close, and this is an organization, well, I mean... It's very hard to reform this. It's incredibly difficult. Yeah. So it's become a monster. Yes, it is a monster. And it's not, I am absolutely not against any sort of pan European <clears throat> collaboration because look at us, you know, yeah. look what we're doing. We're fighting for a pan European conservative movement, mm -hmm. but in the form of the EU, that's the exact opposite of the European spirit, I would say. And it's yeah. always like getting, becoming even worse, like now with all the taxation, like on, on countries and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah, us in the it, north, we're not benefiting much from it, are we? So, yeah. yeah. And that leads us to the next question here. Are you a member of a political party right now? No, I'm not. Hmm. Okay, so um, what drives you to be more passionate about uh, truth telling and uh, societal issues? Oof, well, um, seeing the opposite being done all the time i guess that goes for all of us right we see yeah. so many of our you know of the of the, our media of our politicians our establishment saying things that don't match the reality that we're living every day or the things that we see happening to our country that just you know being constantly bombarded with something that totally doesn't match reality or makes us want to yeah. challenge it yeah. mm. We feel you, but in oh, Swedish. Totally, totally. <laughs> 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 um, hmm. Hmm. Um, I Maybe about the um, political correctness. That's a good question. Yeah, or I have a question here. Yeah. What achievement you have achieved over the last couple of years are you most proud of? What achievement that I've achieved? Mm. Um, well, I was actually quite, it might sound silly, but I was just really quite proud to graduate cum laude, so with honors. Mm. That was something oh, that I was really cool. happy that yeah. I succeeded. Good doing. job. I really liked writing. I wrote my master thesis on contractualization of sex. Might sound like a weird topic, but it was very closely related to the Me Too movement mm. and how this sort of you know, this, how this movement is ruining a lot of things for in our romantic life, but also legally how it's putting women and especially, you know, this, this call for consent culture, mm -hmm. how that's putting women at risk, actually, in their oh, romantic lives. Oh, we know a few things about that in Sweden <laughs> as well. I might make a video about that in the future. Yeah, I will. That's, that's very yeah. interesting. If you want to know more about it. Yeah, interesting yeah, that you studied more. We have yeah. a consent law in Sweden. Yeah, also. I we definitely do. wrote yeah. about Sweden yeah. in my thesis. Oh, you yeah, did? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're such yeah. an example, always. Oh. Sweden is always such an example. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, uh, in comparison, this is also a good question. So, what's the difference between Sweden and the Netherlands in terms of identity politics? And that maybe... Ooh, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, I would say not much in terms of institutional madness. I think that the identity politics, you know, this intersectional feminism, all the wokey type of ideas have pretty mm -hmm. much infiltrated in all of our institutions, or actually, I should say, the institutions are infiltrating it into society, rather. Mm -hmm. um, so institutionally, I would say we're pretty much equally screwed. Um, <laughs> I don't know screwed yeah. um, but in, I feel like here in Sweden, in your you guys is regular life it's m even more um, far like developed and and sort like of the culture invested. yeah mm. I, something as simple as these gender neutral bathrooms of yours they're <laughs> everywhere yeah they're I pretty mean, terrible that we don't we're not quite there yet we would see them in universities and stuff we would see mm. them in government buildings we're not so in progressive not in eva you guys are so far behind sweden we're so progressive and we know what we're talking about with this gender neutral bathroom <laughs> you know how everyone feels so much better in sweden because we have gender neutral bathrooms <laughs> yeah <laughs> I still have to experience that apparently, but yeah, sure. Keep up, Dutch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Come on. Okay, so who is it? Is it me? Yeah, I think so. Um, how are you addressing political correctness when all people surrounding you are politically correct? But maybe not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Coming here. No, I think I have filtered out, at least I have filtered out a lot of people that are so politically correct that they will y usually just get so angry with you that you can't really be around them. So I can, it, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, I understand that people, that somebody asked this question because it is very difficult. Like, how do you do it? If you're very outspoken about your beliefs and you're surrounded by people who are politically correct, they're probably going to tell you that you can't have your ideas. And that's not something that I would like in my friendships, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, but I surely do still have friends who are, you know, have different thoughts than I do, are more on the left or, you know, are not, are not political at all. But at least I want people to respect me <clears throat> or respect my freedom of speech. Yeah. But that's so. that's usually where, where I get, I know that I'm not the one being interviewed here, but still, that's usually what, what gets my goat. Do you say that? What gets my goat going? Is, isn't that a family guy thing? Whatever. I have not heard that. I don't no. care. So, uh, like, usually the right wing always respects the left, being like, we respect you, you can have your opinions, they're separate from mine, but mm -hmm. we can have ours and you can have yours. Mm -hmm. And we respect them. Mm -hmm. But then we can tell them that they're wrong, but we still respect them. But with the left, it's always like, you can't have those opinions. Those opinions are not mm. good. They're bad. You're a bad person. Yes. You're a, a monster. And they're, yeah, they're judging you mm. in another way when it's from the left to the right, mm. except for like the right not judging the same way towards the left. Yeah. Do you yeah. guys feel me? I think that's yeah, not absolutely. true. And I think it's yeah. because the left are the ones in power right now. Yes. They're the ones who are feeling like, oh, well, yes. you have to listen to us because we're the power. It's the yeah. status quo, mm. exactly. so it's yeah. the easiest. But the thing is, I mean, that's never going to change up until people have the courage to express their opinions. So talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about it. it. <laughs> yeah, so my advice to this person who asked that question would be, pick your battles wisely i would say don't you know I, I can imagine that you don't always feel like constantly being in a political yeah. argument with people so i would say to spare yourself a heart attack pick your battles wisely but then when things are really important to you stand up for them be calm and ask questions yeah. you know because yeah. usually people will then at some point notice that they you know might get into trouble a little bit in their argumentation and, <laughs> and a, bad bad idea, to a bad idea is to start political uh, like arguing at the family dinner yeah. that's usually <laughs> not a, 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 <laughs> like a family at dinners like over the easter if everyone has a couple of glasses of wine and start talking politics good luck <laughs> so much fun so much fun okay next question so who is eva and why this co collaboration with ricks at this moment in time okay who is eva i think we kind of covered that one but why ricks and why yes yeah i think enough with the existential questions for me <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, why am i here well yeah. I, i've kind of touched on that a little bit in the mm -hmm. teaser haven't i i mean to me and to i know to many dutch people who are more on the conservative side sweden is seen as an example of what not to do 
And so it's very interesting for me to come here and to see what's going on with your country from basically from the epicenter of political correctness. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. keep your friends close, keep your enemies <laughs> close. <here. laughs> yeah. And how has the response been from your first video? Very, very good. I feel like people have liked it so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's still very new. I've never done this before. I don't have any experience really with hosting a show. Yeah. Uh, so it's very new for me. And also, yeah, if anybody has any suggestions or tips, I'm very open to hearing those. But mm -hmm. my experience with the show has been great. My experience here with the team has been wonderful. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying my... One of our Swedish great. minister has commentated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Morgan, Lilla Morgan. I cannot help but feel like yeah. we're doing something right in that case. I mean, yeah. they're already exactly. afraid now. Yeah. Like, mm, you did were. a great job, Eva. Yeah. And okay. should we end on that what note? What about yes. the last yeah. question here? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because that, this is a good one. In what ways can we help to support you apart from subscribing to this channel and telling your friends? Oh, uh, well, I mean, yeah, subscribing to the channel is a good thing. And mm -hmm. then following maybe all of us on our social medias, yeah. uh, liking, subscribing, the whole, you know, I feel like I sound like a YouTuber when I say <laughs> this, but it's, it's kind of what it is. It's uh, like, yeah, we have, yeah, yeah, we, have share. Yeah. We, we exist on Instagram, on yeah. Twitter, especially on YouTube and Facebook, Facebook but yeah. our main channel is YouTube, but we are working on uh, developing all the other channels as well. And we we all have the personal social media accounts that you can find like in the descriptions and whatever. So thank yeah, you so thank much, you. Eva, thank and you. we thank wish you. you good luck. We're excited we're, to have you here. Yeah, we're so excited. I'm very excited as well. And thank you for all the questions, yeah. uh, all the viewers, and we would like to welcome all the new, both Dutch viewers and uh, other viewers that we have out there. Welcome. Or welcome. <laughs> welcome. 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 <laughs> and until then, uh, or from now on, happy yeah. Easter yes. and welcome to Rix. All right, bye. bye. <laughs>